Welcome to Barley and Hops. I'm George. And we're here today to unlock all the mysteries for beginners and a good review for novice or experts about home distilling. Now you're either here because someone pointed you to this channel, you stumbled upon it, or you just want a good, quick review. And in all those cases, you are very welcome. We love to have you. Uh, I'm just excited to be here. And what I want to try to do is, years and years ago, when I started this channel, uh, the, the, the beginning of this channel really started because I was searching for other information. And I found there was so much misinformation and disinformation about this particular hobby um, that I just decided, I said, it's, it's got to be done better than that. So here I am, uh, and we're here uh, almost six years later. Now, um, what I also decided to do over the recent couple of years, because we've been, we continue to produce videos, um, and a lot of times it's based on the assumption that the viewer already has a firm understanding. That's not always the case. So in order to try to, to, this is a perfect setup for someone who's just curious or you just want to get started. So for all of you experienced brewers out there, distillers, um, I won't spend any time on some technical terms or some real deep topics. We're just going to brush over the top and get everybody up to speed so that anyone, because anyone can do this. Now, number one, this is a 10th grade science project. You have to understand that. It's not that difficult. Um, I've been accused of making it sound simpler than it is, and I don't. It's just that easy. Uh, now, if you'd like, I can make it so complicated that you just turn us off, and I wish you wouldn't do that. So we're not gonna, we're, we're just gonna keep it simple. Now. If you get an opportunity and you're a new viewer, please subscribe, comment below, share us with your friends. Thank you. I've got that out of the way. Whether you are making beer, wine, or whiskey, uh, or cider, or sake, uh, all of those processes begin exactly the same way. So we're going to have a series of videos that will walk us through step by step and today's just an introduction on basic equipment in order to get started now this won't break the bank that's the good thing about it and i'll give you some key information on how to make selections it it's relatively simple now here we go some of the basic inf st stuff that you're going to need because see you need to go through a fermentation process first we're not even talking about grains or sugars or all that stuff. It, we'll get to that, trust me. But you just the equipment you need in order to, to begin, um, and then what you need in order to move it to the next step. And those follow-on videos will take us there step by step through an entire run. So, bear with me. The first thing we need are buckets. Uh, you can use glass carboys. Uh, you can use stainless steel fermenters. Uh, I, it really doesn't matter. Uh, remember that your yeast and all of your ingredients have no conscience. They don't care what they're in, as long as they are in something that will withhold them. Hmm. Okay, plastic buckets work extremely well. This is a 6.8 uh, gallon bucket. Uh, and the reason it's 6.8 gallons is because you fill it up to 5 gallons and it leaves you some headroom. That's the only reason it's that large. Uh, be forewarned, any plastic bucket like this will do. It's HDPE, high density, poly, high density polyethylene resin. And you can tell it's high density polyethylene resin because it's a thick plastic. Uh, if it was, and that's number two, if you look on the bottom, you know, you got that uh, recycling. It's got a number in the center of it. These will be number two. Uh, number one are normally like your soda bottles you can see through. You know, then you got three, four. It goes all the way up to seven. Um, there's no such thing, be forewarned. There's no such thing. If you see an advertisement for 
Oh, you're going to brew and you're going to uh, uh, ferment? Uh, you need this food grade bucket. All buckets are food grade. Hello? All buckets are food grade. <laughs> Some are better than others. Some have a seal at the top. This one's got a, that, a seal, a rubber ring that goes, because you've got to be able to seal the bucket. Uh, and some don't. But they are all food grade buckets. So there's no, really, there's, uh, retailers are going to hate me. There's really no such thing as a food grade bucket. HDPE number two. So you'll need that. You'll need the lids, of course, with holes in them. And the holes are for these. And they come in two different styles. Uh, there, there are other styles, but these are the two most common. These are the bubblers. Uh, this is a double bubble, and this is a three-piece bubble, or three-piece vent. Uh, and what this vent is for is this vent, you put water in it up to this little line here that's drawn across it, uh, and that allows, the water sits in there like a P-trap in your toilet or in your drain in the sink, uh, and it allows air to flow in one direction only but not come back. So as your yeast are eating the sugars and producing ethanol, alcohol, and their other byproduct with CO2, that will escape and no air will get in. And we'll cover more in depth about that later. Uh, this one works on the same principle, but the only difference is it has a cap that sits on the top and it bounces up and down. And sometimes you can hear it going clack, 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 clack. It's just a different style, but it does exactly the same thing. So those are the two things. Two of these are, are, are basically what you'll need. Can you get by with one? Absolutely. And the reason we have two is because we always have what we call, here's a term for you, a primary fermenter and a secondary fermenter. There's no such thing as secondary fermentation. We use the term, uh, but it's actually clarifying. Okay. It's not, it's not fermenting any longer, it's clearing. So we would ferment in one bucket, and then after an appropriate time, we would just move this liquid from this bucket to this bucket and leave everything else behind because you'll have a sediment on the bottom. Now this is called our secondary fermentation. Clarifying. We're just gonna allow everything to settle out so that we get this as clear as we possibly can. All right, now are you with me so far? Okay, so those are the two things that you definitely should have at the very beginning, and I don't care if they're five gallon, six gallon, seven gallon, but it doesn't matter. Uh, HDPE2, hence food grade, right? Yeah, all right. Another good thing to have is something to stir with. I've got this large paddle that I got years and years ago. Uh, you can get these online as well. Uh, you can either use this, you can use a stainless steel spoon, uh, you can use a piece of wood uh, if it's clean and keep it sanitized. We'll get to that. Uh, but you just need something to be able to stir with. That's, it's a basic ingredient, a basic necessity. Uh, the other basic necessity you'll need is when it comes to cleanliness, um, remember first of all, whenever you're cleaning plastic, always use your hand uh, or a really soft cloth. Uh, don't use any scrubbers or scrub because you don't want to put any scratches in there because that's where bacteria start to grow and populate. So if you use your hand with warm soapy water, you'll be able to clean everything out. But once you're finished, you want to be able to sanitize. You can sanitize in many, many different ways. So please don't let that confuse you or scare you off. I tend to use star sand. Uh, two ounces of this goes to five gallons, last you a lifetime. Uh, I put it in a spray bottle, that way it doesn't go bad because it does dissipate if you leave it open. This is a spray product. Uh, you'll spray it, clean, spray, shake it, and use it. It's an instant sanitizer. Uh, they use it in hospitals, they use it in kitchens, they, they use it everywhere. So it's a really good product and it really comes in handy in the brewing community. Uh, there's one other thing you're going to definitely need and that is a hydrometer. Now this is a basic hydrometer uh, and sometimes they're called a beer and wine hydrometer. Uh, they come by many different names, they come by many different colors and they have different, they look different but they all do exactly the same thing. What they measure is they measure, these run about six to eight bucks, they measure the uh, viscosity 
for lack of better words, of your whatever your liquid is. So you'd be able to drop it in and it will tell you how much potential alcohol, based on the amount of sugars are there, you have to ferment. And then when you're finished fermenting, it'll float lower, it'll tell you you're either done or you're near done. It, that's, you need to be able to measure it. So we'll cover that in great detail when the time comes. Uh, now, if you're moving on to the distilling portion, uh, you'll need one other item, and that is a proof and trail hydrometer, which is, it operates, it acts exactly the same way as a regular hydrometer, although, and these, again, six to eight bucks, the proof and trail hydrometer is only used only for high alcohol percentage uh, ABV mixtures. Hmm. Meaning, after you've run it through a still, you drop this in to find out what the proof is or the percentage of alcohol. This will not work in beer. This will not work in wine. This will not work in your buckets. This will only work and be useful to you once you've distilled it and you've got it in a jar. Okay? So keep that in mind. Now, what? Let's talk prompt. Oh, one last thing. It will come in handy. This is a not, you don't have to have, but it's nice to have. And this is a pH meter. Uh, you can actually use pH strips. Um, and we'll talk more about pH when we get to that, that stage as well. So, uh, because all fermentations are really, really, they really look towards a lower pH. pH is really the acidity of a mixture. And it, it's measured from 0 to 14, 7 being base, neutral. It's neither acidic nor is it alkaline. It's right there in the middle. Most city waters are somewhere around 7, 2, 8, 3, something like that. Um, all mashes, warts, lees, uh, whatever you want to call what's in your buckets that you're going to ferment should be lower than 7. It's, that, that's really easy to get there. Normally, they, though, you, you will achieve below 7 almost every time all by yourself without even measuring it. Um, but there are particular times when you want to be able to measure that so that you can make sure you're in the right ballpark. In particular, uh, if whiskeys with grains, you're looking for a 5.2. Uh, if you're really making a, uh, a delectable wine, uh, some of them will uh, ferment best at 3.4, 3.5. So you want to be able to find out what that is. That's it, this, or you can, you can order some uh, pH strips that change color works just as well. So that would give you an idea. Now those are, that is the absolute basic of equipment that you would need to start. And what are we looking at here? Probably 35, 40 bucks. That all depends on where you get it. Um, there are some places that will sell you an entire kit to get you going. Now, we have not gotten to anything else yet because we haven't decided what we're going to do. You see, with this, you're capable of the first steps of making either beer, you can make wine, uh, you can make cider, um, gosh, you can make a mash for whiskeys. Uh, so this is universal. You can use this for all of that. Um, it's just, what do you do with it once you've finished this process to get it to beer, wine, oh, cider, whiskey? I mean, that's the difference. So you've already made the alcohol. It's just, what do you do with it in order to make the um, libation that you are looking for? I hope that makes sense and that kind of opens up the world. And on the next video, we're going to talk about, in specific, uh, distilling, um, what the process is, and then what are the basic requirements that you need in order to distill. And we always end our videos by saying, oh, happy distilling.